What's going on guys, it's Cooper Codes. And in this video, we are going to be building this contact list application that has persistent state. As you can see, we have Cooper Codes saved as a contact here. And if we refresh our page, that Cooper Codes data is going to stay even after the refresh. If we add in more data, for example, my nemesis, Cooper doesn't code, type in the phone number, add the contact. We're now going to have two different contacts. And if we refresh our page again, we're going to have both of those contacts saved. This is because we are using a Svelte writable to store our data, and then that writable is getting backed up to local storage. We can do this relatively easily by using some functionality from Skeleton UI, which is one of the best UI toolkits you can use in Svelkit, not sponsored by the way. They have this really great utility called Local Storage Store, which allows you to take a regular Svelte writable and then turn that writable into something that's going to get stored in local storage. For example, in this video, we are backing up our contact store writable to local storage right here. And you'll see it has all this different data stored within local storage. And if we refresh, you'll see the data stays here and our application can continue to use it. So even if you're not working on this exact project within Svelkit, this is really useful stuff to know if you want anything to stay on the client side or just have a state that persists after a user refreshes. Let's get started by building our Svelkit application with Skeleton. To create our SvelteKit application with Skeleton UI, we can use the command npm create skeleton app at latest. And then the name of the directory, I'm just going to call my app. To make things easy, I'm pretty much just going to say yes to everything so everyone's on the same page. So we are going to be using TypeScript, so say yes to that. ESLint, say yes. Prettier, say yes. Playwright, yep. VidTest, we are going to use that, so say yes. And then you can use the spacebar to turn on the code block and the pop-ups. A lot of this stuff we're not going to be using during the tutorial, but it's just so you're set up if you want to do anything from this project. Forms and typography are important, so say yes to those. And then you can select a theme. I'm just going to do the default skeleton. And then say yes to the bare bones app template. It's then going to install your application. Now we can see that our full application got created. So we can go into my app, open up the folder and see everything in there. To go into the app in our terminal, we can say CD my app like this. And our initial boilerplate code is going to be inside of the source folder. This is like where your actual application is. And then under routes, it's going to be under the page.svelte and the layout.svelte. Also, this is a quick aside, but if you're completely new to Svelte, you're going to want to install the Svelte for VS Code extension. This is going to make you actually have syntax highlighting, which is incredibly important. But inside of these two files, we're going to see our initial code here. And so we can go to the terminal and say npm run dev, and we will see this code running on our server. So as you can see, the exact same code is what we'd expect. We can now get started by creating some initial styling for our web page and creating those two inputs and a button to add contacts to our list. So this initial styling from Skeleton UI is pretty good, but I'm going to delete everything except these two internal divs. This means that everything is going to be centered to the middle of our page, both horizontally and vertically. So I'm going to make a little h1 at the top. The class is going to be equal to h1. It's just so we can have some styling for what this is. I named this thing contact list, but feel free to call it whatever you want. Then a little paragraph to describe the product. All your contacts in one persistent state. So you guys don't forget what this video is about. We can then make some pretty simple text inputs by saying inputs class is equal to input. That's going to give us the text input styling. Then we can do things, for example, like type is equal to text and then placeholder is equal to name. So this would be the text input for the name of your contact. And so if you run our application, everything is gonna look like this so far. To make things look a bit nicer, we can add a label to our text inputs. We can go in here and create a label and it's gonna wrap around our entire input and it's going to have a class of label. We're doing this because this is some predefined styling made by Skeleton UI. And so within the span, we can say what the label is. For example, it's going to be the name here. And if we save and go back to our application, we can see that everything is styled. And remember, this styling is coming from the Skeleton UI. And so we can make another text input, bring it down here. Instead of a name input, we are going to have a phone number. And the placeholder is then going to say phone number as well. All right, everything looks good. The last thing we're going to need is that button to actually add the contact. So go into here and say button, type is equal to button, and then class is equal to... These classes right here are going to give the button its styling, so we can say BTN. And then we have to do a variant of a certain button, which just means a certain styling of how we want our button to look. I'm going to say variant-filled. And you'll see there's a bunch of different variants you can choose from for your button. I'm going to make it simple, it's just going to say add contact. And there we go, we have a nice, very simple UI. 
We can now get started by going under here and saying HR. So this HR is going to put a line just like this in our contact list. And then we're going to have a little H2. It's going to have a class of H2. And it's going to be your contacts. And so you can imagine we are now going to render all the different contacts for a certain user under this. So now we need a system to actually hold the contacts of our application. So we can scroll up to the top here. I'm going to delete this comment above and I'm going to make a script where the language is equal to TypeScript. So lang is equal to TS. One incredibly important part of this tutorial is we need to import the local storage store from at skeleton labs slash skeleton. Because remember, this is a utility that comes from a skeleton. And then we have to import our writable type. So we can say import. And if we want to only import the type, we can say type writable from svelte slash store. And so an easy way to think about these two things is the local storage store is what backs up our data. And then the writable type handles our data. And so when we define our store in SpellKit, it's going to be stored within a writable, which is something we can read slash write from throughout our application. And because this is a TypeScript tutorial, the writable needs a type. In this video, we are going to be storing a bunch of different contacts. So we can imagine that our writable is going to have data that might look something like this. It might be an array and each spot in the array is going to have an object where it's going to have a name, for example, Cooper, and then a phone number. And so in order to have a writable where we have an array of objects that look like this, we need to create a type. In this video, I'm just going to create the type within this page here. But if you want this type to be accessible from anywhere, you can go into app.d.ts. But if you want the type to only be in your page.svelte, you can just write an interface in TypeScript right there. So for example, I'm going to say interface contact. And then what are the two properties we have? Well, we have name, which is going to be a string because you can see it's a string right here. And then same thing for the phone number. It's also going to be a string because again, it's a string right here. And so if we want an array of contacts in TypeScript, that would look something like this contact array. And so when we build our writable, which is of a certain type, we can say const contact store. So now we're actually building out the writable store it is typed to a writable, which has a generic and inside of these braces right here, it's asking for the type of the writable. For example, I'm going to say in this writable, we want to store an array of contacts. And then we set this entire statement equal to a local storage store. In local storage, it's required that you have a key. For example, you would have like contacts would be then equal to your array of contacts within local storage. And so we can just name that here. I'm just going to say contact store the exact same way we have the variable. And then it needs an initial value. And I'm just going to initially say that we're going to have an empty array. If you want a more in-depth look at writables, I have an e-commerce store video, which has a great in-depth look at how writables work, especially when managing products in a store, for example. So go check out that video if you want. But pretty much at the end of the day, the contact store here is a writable, which holds an array of contacts. And if we ever want to get the value of the contact store, we can say dollar sign contact store is going to get us the active value. It's kind of a strange thing initially, but think about it like this. Contact store is the writable object. So that means that from there you can do like, you know, subscribe, delete, change the value, for example. And then dollar sign contact store is how you get the value of your store. So it's kind of two different ways of looking at it. And I bring all this up because if we want to make functions to, for example, add a contact to our store, what can we do? Well, we can make a function, add contact, and we can say that the dollar sign contact store, so the value of our store is equal to an array. So right now, if you ran this add contact, it would constantly set your store value equal to an empty array. But as an example, let's say that the value of your contact store was equal to Cooper's in there. Let's say a guy named Peter is in there as well. What we can do is we can take the new contact we want to add and put it in the front of the array and then take everything in the contact store. So dot, 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 dollar sign contact store. This means it's going to use the spread operator over this array here. And just to explain that, if you do a dot, 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 Cooper comma Peter, it's going to kind of do this where it, instead of putting the values in the array, it takes them out of the array and it adds them to another array, for example. And so to give an example of this happening is if we have an array and I wanted to add in a person named Bob, what we do is we say, put Bob in the front like this, and then we can do dot, dot, dot on the Cooper and the Peter here. And then that is going to eventually become Bob comma Cooper comma Peter like that. 
And you'll see because this is an array of contacts, this object that it's looking to add on top is of type contact. And so it needs to have the two properties that we have in our contact type, which is a name and a phone number. So the name is gonna be an empty string, and then the phone number is gonna be an empty string because we actually need to get these values from our text inputs, so let's go do that. Getting values from text inputs in Svelte is actually super simple. So we can scroll up to the top here, and I'm going to put two different variables to hold our text input strings. I'm gonna say let input name be equal to an empty string, and then let input phone number be equal to an empty string as well. If we scroll down to our inputs, we can use this thing called binding in SvelteKit. So we can bind the value, so the actual text value, to a specific variable in our JavaScript. For example, we can bind the name to the input name variable. And so if the text input changes, the input name is going to change to whatever the value of the text input is. And the exact same thing is gonna happen for the phone number as well, because they're both strings, they work the exact same way, so you can do the input phone number for the other one. And that's all you have to do. Now we can trust that the input name and the input phone number are always going to be the text values of those certain inputs. And now that we know this, we can go into our contact store here and we can set the name equal to the input name and then the phone number equal to the input phone number. And so you can imagine if we look at this Bob example up here, we are going to have the name is Bob and then the phone number is gonna be Bob's phone number. And then everyone else in our contact store is gonna be put to the end of the array right here. And if we want to run this add contact when the actual add contact button gets pressed, we can just do this. We can go down to the on click. So we're gonna to listen to the click event on the add contact button. And when it gets clicked, we want to run the add contact function. So the user clicks on this button and then it's gonna run this code up here. And because this contact store is gonna be holding that array of contacts, we can actually display that information to our users by using an each statement in Svelte. So we can go down to under your contacts and render some data out. So we can say hashtag, I know, I know, I know you should say pound sign, but I think it's a hashtag. And then we can get the value of our store by saying dollar sign contact store, just like we discussed before. It's going to be that array of our contact elements. And to get the individual object we're looping over, we can get that current contact and we can also get the index that we are at. And then we also have to close our each loop in the bottom here like this. And I'm gonna make a very simple little card here. So we can say div, and then the class is gonna be equal to card. And then I'm gonna do p-2. This is gonna give some padding around our card. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna make an h1, which is gonna say contact.name. And then another h1, which is gonna say contact.phone number. And so now we should be able to type into these text values, press add contact, and then it's going to render a new contact here. Let's go see what happens. So as you guys can see, we have our little interface. Let's type in Cooper codes and a fake phone number, of course, press add contact and boom, there we go. We have a contact in our list. We can have refresh and it's going to be persisted in our state, which is great news. Couple things is we cannot delete contacts. And so if we add, you know, my arch nemesis, Cooper doesn't code, you'll see he's gonna stay in there forever, which is not a good thing. So let's try and delete a contact. We can get started by creating the actual function to delete contacts. So I'm gonna go up here and say function delete contact. In this video, I'm just going to delete by index. So you could imagine if we are on index one and we want to delete that element, we could just do some simple deletion in JavaScript to get that done, right? So I'm going to get the index, which is going to be a number. And for this video, I'm going to be doing something called filtering. This isn't like crazily efficient or anything, but it makes the code nice and simple for us. So we can say dollar sign contact store. So the value of our store is equal to dollar sign contact store dot filter. This filter is literally going to like filter if you're imagine like filtering water in real life, right? <laughs> is you can take the current contact and also the contact index that you're currently at point it to an arrow function. So this is going to run some logic on every single item inside of our array. And we're gonna say only keep the item if the contact index does not equal the index we are trying to delete. And if you're like, what's that logic? How does that make sense? We can take a look at a quick example. Is let's say we had Bob, Cooper, and Peter, and we wanted to delete index one. So that means I'm gonna go, because Cooper is at index one, because it goes zero, one, two. At every single index in our array, we are asking ourselves the question, does this contact index not equal the index we're trying to delete? So for Bob's case, it's gonna say zero does not equal one, which is true. 
And so it's going to build up this array of the things that it's filtering, right? So if it's true, that means it's going to keep Bob. And then it's going to go to Cooper and it's gonna say one does not equal one. Okay, now that's false. That means that Cooper is not gonna get added to the filtered array. And if we go to Peter's case, his index is at two, two does not equal one, which is gonna be true. And so by the end, we're gonna have both Bob and Peter. And so this is the logic behind Cooper and how he's gonna get deleted. Because remember, at the end of our day, our new contact store value is gonna be equal to Bob and Peter like this. And so now we can go and make a delete button for our delete contact. So for every single contact, we are going to make a little button. The type is going to be of button and the class. Remember, these classes are for styling. It's going to be the BTN styling, BTN dash small. And then I'm going to use the variant dash filled dash error. This is going to give us a red styling. And then we can make the button just say delete like this. Then whenever we click a button, for example, we can say on click. It's going to be equal to some logic. Inside of here, I'm going to do an arrow function like this. And we have to use the arrow function syntax because in this case, we are going to do delete contact and we are going to add an index of a number. And in this case, we can actually just add the index that we're looping through right here. So you can imagine when it renders the person at index zero is going to make a delete contact specifically for index zero. And so that's all the logic we need for deleting our contacts. If we save our Svelkit application and then go back to our website. And of course I misspelled variant. So if you guys weren't as dumb as me, you would get this right, but variant, there we go. It's gonna give it the error styling. And so now we can see, we can finally delete Cooper doesn't code, he's gotta go. And boom, he is gone. And if you ever wanna see the actual local storage that Skeleton UI is using in the background, you can always go and inspect element and then go to application and then go to local storage right here. And you'll see we have our contact store with the Cooper codes and the phone number here. And of course, as we refresh, that's always gonna stay the same. And if we want to delete this, we can check this out where we delete here and it's going to set our contact store to an empty array. All right, in the most cliche fashion, I'm going to make a name called subscriber and it's going to be your phone number right here. And so if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. I got a bunch of Svelkid content on the way and thanks so much for watching.